This is the Gathering of Champions, an event hosted twice every year by Foundations for Farming. Guys, we really believe God is calling us not to trust in man. In this March 2011 conference, people have come from different parts of the world to be part of an exciting adventure. My name is uh, Kimberly Kamal, and um, I'm very excited to be here. Hey, my name is Marian Tshimba. I'm from Zambia. I'm attending uh, the Foundation for Farming for the first time. I'm Valide Plessy. I'm a, a farmer from South Africa with agriculture interests. I'm slowly moving out of my farming now to work full-time uh, with Foundations for Farming. My name is Michael Mubirma Akur. I'm uh, from Southern Sudan. My name is Miriam and I'm from Mexico and we are so happy for to be here because it's my first time in the Foundation for Farming. These people have been drawn here by a vision sweeping across the nation of Zimbabwe. This vision was championed by ex-commercial farmer Brian Aldrev. I would say that um, Brian's vision is very much a Jesus-centered vision of evangelizing uh, individuals, communities and nations using agriculture and the experience he's had as a farmer as the tool, as the entry point for, an evan for evangelizing. And uh, Brian would be quick to tell you that the, the, the two qualities of Christ that are central to this is unselfishness and humility. The vision, widely known as conservation agriculture, is spreading like wildfire, transforming lives and communities. It fits into the whole of the prophetic view that God has given us because, firstly, it's all come out of the Lord's heart for the poor. I asked God, firstly, why are they poor? How can we bring them out of poverty? And that's the whole thing of the technology that's very appropriate, the very simple management system on time and standard without wastage with joy. And that was a specific answer for the micro poor where they are. And to come out of poverty by pro providing for their family a food and also a surplus to sell to pay for all the other expenses. Thereby also, you know, blessing the nation because they're, not, they're reducing the importation of food. Make sure Muchenje was noted at the conference as an outstanding champion who has applied this vision faithfully and is working wholeheartedly to bring transformation to his community. I just want to make sure to stand up. There is, make sure, stand up so people can see you. Thank you, make sure. I met Make Sure um, many years ago. He was a, he was a gold panner. From, uh, from the farm, we reached out to the gold panners on the Angwa River, and that's where I met Makeshu and Martha. So I just want to share with you their story. Makeshu and Martha were resettled on what we called a 95 resettlement, which was still a, a willing buyer, willing seller farm. It was a game farm, very low potential. Two thousand and five that's when I went to River of Life trained by Audrey. When I came back and really spread this message into the community, the support was very bad. People didn't respond and they were jealousy, especially when I did my plot. Each and every person who was passing by it was good. So the people who were providing them with fertilizer, they were asking why your fields are looking different to this guy. So they were jealous. So no one is to support me at that stage. So I was feeling very lonely in my, yeah, my relatives, they ran away from me. Yumurima <laughs> 
The Gathering of Champions is a platform for champions, people who have committed their lives to spreading this vision so as to bring restoration to Zimbabwe as well as to the African continent. This is the reason the theme for this conference was Rebuilding Nations. Yeah, I just want to go over a few very important things. Um, God has been so Brian was able to share with us uh, the, the rebuilding blueprint from Isaiah 58 for any nation to rebuild. If you do those things, if you turn back unselfishly to the Lord, make a plan for the poor, this is key, dovetailing into the agricultural entry point of being faithful and stewarding the land as God intended, then, verse 12 says, you will be known as the rebuilder on ancient ruins. Some of the countries represented at the conference took turns to testify how foundations for farming and being a part of the Champs Conference had transformed their lives. The Champs Conference was for us a, a very big eye-opener. The foundations for farming system is so simple, cost-effective and really reaching people and touching people. And that made a big impression on me. That was a message on the one side. On the other side it was the people. You see humble people, people that are servants, people that are are showing the characteristics of Jesus that, that we all should, so, should show. And, and, and they really uh, made me think and they, 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 they shook me a bit. Uh, I must say, after that, uh, I couldn't just walk away from that untouched. Uh, for the past five years, we, my husband and I have been um, working in a children's home in Zambia. We have 42 orphans that, that we're helping to care for. We've been getting donations from outside. But as we all know, uh, donation usually come maybe in the beginning, but let alone they trickle down and finally they dry out completely. And I don't want uh, one day to get a call that there's no more donations coming and we have 42 children and we have no money to buy food or mm -hmm. send them to school or anything like that. That's why when I heard about a foundation for farming, I knew this was the key for us to obtain uh, the knowledge we need to be able to uh, obtain the, uh, the food security for our children and also uh, be able to not only have food security but be able to grow enough so that we have food surplus that we can sell at our roadside market and even to uh, downtown in Osaka. So this conference here I think is really going to turn our, our lives around. CHAMPS is an important conference to me because it, help, it has helped us to network with other people who are doing the same thing with us. It has helped quite well. When we started, we started with the 10 people, the following year 100, we are up to 600 and the people in the churches are now able to give into the church so as to get the offerings sustained in terms of food. Like for example, we received about a ton in offerings from the people, poor people who used not to give. They are now giving and the word of God says, blessed are those who give than the one who receive. In 1999, we moved to a children's home in Cholo district in the southern region of Malawi. At the end of the eight years, we had 130 children living on site and we had 34 hectares to farm. But we really didn't know how to farm. Somebody called me from Zimbabwe. So they came to our place, I welcomed them, and we just hosted a training. And when they started to share about this farming and from the word and how great this is, something exploded on my inside because I saw those roots and I saw the vision of God breaking the curse of poverty over Africa. And then we applied what we've learned and the next year we tripled our harvests from the same land. It's being laid on the foundation of Jesus. We still want to see a rotation of crops, so we're still promoting a maize, a legume, and a flower crop in, the, in, in, in that. And this board is, is a, a picture of what we have in the garden here. You can see it's got different color codes. Why are we highlighting farming as a key element of rebuilding the nation? I would answer that in our context, there are practical and prophetic reasons for that. Practically, our brand of poverty is the brand in which we are facing famine. We are facing a situation where we do not have enough resources to be able to feed ourselves. Across the earth, there's poverty of all different kinds. 
and this is not the only poverty we suffer with but on that particular score there is a very practical area for the church to respond I would say prophetically God has given us a tool in Foundations for Farming and the gift of his prophet Brian Aldry to help a church respond to God in practical ways and bless the nation as a result. It's for that reason that we are linking this uh, physical aspect of the kingdom to the spiritual message that we're preaching. Sharing and giving, teaching the poor, being faithful with our light, bringing you hope, building with love on the foundation of Jesus.